Hey guys, I'm Dr. Aaron Horshick, and today we're going to talk about how to fix patellar tendinitis. Get up and get down, get up and get now here's the deal, you've been experiencing pain around your patellar tendon. Is it truly tendinopathy? The first thing we need to know is that true patellar tendinitis or tendinopathy will be painful right at the tip of where the uh, patella and tendon meet or at the tip of where the tendon meets the tibia. Usually it's not gonna be painful right in the center unless you've hit your tendon on something. So that's number one, yes or no, do you have true tendinopathy? The second thing is, is it load related pain? If you perform a body weight squat, how much pain is there? Let's say it's a one out of 10 pain, but you do multiple tuck jumps, now all of a sudden, that's a seven out of 10 pain. Seven's obviously much worse. That's showing it's load related pain. You see, your tendons speak the language of load. And I like to think about your tendons like a thermometer. Let's say you've worked hard most of your life, you've been a strength athlete for a long time. Your tendons maybe are fairly strong. Thermometer wise, they have a degree of 80 degrees, okay? But let's say you've had one really hard workout or you went and played basketball for 10 hours one day and you put so much load from the constant pounding on the ground or the constant amount of box jumps that that tendon load went up to 90 degrees. What that means is that you exceeded your load tolerance that day or that strip of time and because you exceeded your load tolerance, your tendon becomes angry, it calls, becomes reactive. That's when pain sets in. The first step in fixing true patellar tendon pain, tendinopathy, is a Spanish squat isometric. Now here's what this is going to do. You're going to grab a band, it's gotta be a thick band, and put it around the base of your knee. This is a monster band from Rogue. This is about four inches thick, I think, the purple one from uh, Rogue Fitness. I'll have a link to this in the description of the video. But you're gonna back up a good amount. Now, the Spanish squat is basically a reverse wall sit. You're not squatting down like this. You're not hinging. It's a reverse wall sit. So picture there's a wall behind you and you are literally going to sit back like this. And you're just gonna hold it. See, my chest is vertical. Research has shown that true tendinopathy, pain can be greatly decreased and you can regain some of the activation of your quad muscles by doing five sets of 45 seconds. Now, in order for this to truly happen, this needs to be very difficult. And I promise you, holding this for 45 seconds, my quads are burning like crazy. In order for an isometric to decrease pain and improve what is called cortical inhibition, basically the pain decreases how active your muscles can become thereafter, so improve your performance, regain your muscle contraction ability, it needs to be a very heavy isometric, upwards of 70 to 80% of max voluntary contraction. What that means is that your simple wall sit, for most people, most athletes, this is too easy. If you can sit here for a minute, two minutes, it's way too easy. It's not gonna have the benefits that we're looking for with true tendon pain. Even a single leg wall sit for most athletes is too easy. So it needs to be a very heavy isometric in order to do two things, like I said, decrease pain thereafter and improve your ability to regain muscle strength. That is what an isometric does. Five sets of 45 seconds. Now, what this does is it's only the very first step. True tendinopathy, like I said, was due because you overloaded your tendons. You exceeded their load tolerance capability. An isometric only decreases pain and cortical inhibition, allowing you to regain some of that strength. But it doesn't address load on your tendons because that's a very low load movement. From there, what we need to do is modify your training, decrease a little bit of stress in the short term. Remember, we don't want to completely stop training because all you're doing, if you just take two weeks off, is you're slowly lowering your thermometer back down. Your current load tolerance was 80. You exceeded it by going to 90. If you just take time off, it's slowly going back down to 70 or so. So that the next time that you do a normal workout, that's your body's used to being able to tolerate 80, you're just gonna exceed it again. The problem's gonna continue to be a cycle. So what you need to do is trying to do some strength exercises that it puts a load on your tendon, but doesn't continue the pain cycle. So what that means is that we wanna do heavy, slow resistance training. Now the Bulgarian split squat, like I've demonstrated before, is a great exercise for this. You're going to load your tendons, but because we're going very slow, three seconds down, three seconds back up, it's going to allow your body to improve load tolerance at that tendon without making it angry. 
your tendons are like springs. So the faster you use them and the more power you put into them, the more load that's gonna be placed on them. That's why a big box jump where I'm coming up, pop. Because I just landed and used them as springs, I was placing a ton of load on my tendon. So early on, that's gonna be pretty painful. But if I do a very slow, even weighted, hold a lot of weight and go slow down into a Bulgarian split squat, this is okay. So if I can slowly improve my load tolerance and improve how much strength capacity those tendons have with that, and then slowly integrate with some light box jumps or tuck jumps, eventually I can get back to doing full box jumps, loading it like crazy because I'm increasing my load tolerance capabilities without making things worse. Now, here's how you know if you did just enough. Let's say during your training, five for 45 seconds on the Spanish squat. You come over, maybe you do three sets of 15, slow tempo down and back up Bulgarian split squats. You see how you feel. The next day, 24 hours later, do something that originally was painful. Do some tuck jumps. Is it better, worse than the day before? If it's a little bit better, you just did enough the day before in your rehab to improve your load tolerance without making things worse. If it's worse, you did too much. You need to scroll back on how much load you're placing on your tendons. Do less weight on the uh, Bulgarian split squats, do a little bit less weight and uh, amount of volume total. So things like that can be very helpful. If you want to learn more about how to work through tendinopathy pain, check out my website, squatuniversity.com. Click on the blog article tab at the top. Scroll down, how to fix patellar and quad tendon pain because the treatment is very similar between the two. Check out that free article for much more information. So that is it, how to start fixing patellar tendonitis pain with the Spanish squat today. I hope you guys liked today's quick video. If you did, please like, comment, uh, share the video with your friends, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any other questions, aches and pains that you want me to address in future videos, let me know and I'll try to address them. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos, these people have